Hey, welcome everyone. Thanks for joining from Spartan Series today. Um, so today's a CAD workshop. Um, what I'm going to do is I'm going to walk you through what the CAD process looks like for creating a prototype on 971, um, and sort of take you from start to finish, from what what are pro from a concept um, through 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 the process with CAD, and hopefully we'll get out the end with with a model that we could could go and cut and make and turn into something. So starting out um, with start out with kind of what are the high levels of what we're looking to do. Um, we'll start out with an overview of sort of what, are, what, what methods of, you know, construction methods we use with prototyping that we're going to be designing for towards. We'll frame up a, a mock problem here, statement here, um, go over go over what our goals are there, um, walk through some simple planning, and then get bulk of it will be spent working with CAD, working in CAD and kind of showing you what that looks like um, in, in SOLIDWORKS. So starting out with an overview um, on 971 for the, the past couple of years, we've used a, done a lot of prototyping using quarter inch um, Baltic bork birch plywood. Um, we, we like this material because it's, you know, it's, it's relatively, um, relatively cost effective. Um, it's very strong and durable um, and it's quick to cut on, on CNC routers and you know, like the one that we have pictured here. So shown, shown here, you can see a couple prototypes throughout the years um, where we've used this material um, in, to, in, in, you know, in various of, in, you know, different, different types of, of prototypes. And, um, so I'm going to walk through some of the, some of the, what are the mechanical details that kind of make up, up these prototypes. Um, so, you know, one of the things, the key things here is that we're, we're taking off the shelf parts um, or, you know, parts from previous year's robots um, that we have in the lab. Um, and we're direct mounting those into sort of custom wood plates that we'll, we'll cat up on relatively, you know, short time frames and get cut in short time frames. Um, and so, you know, but this is, you know, we, we find this to be a, a nice balance of, you know, getting geometries that are specific to the problems that you're trying to solve and the, the new game pieces and everything while, you know, being representative um, of, of the, you know, getting geometries rep for, the, for the problems um, and using components that we can translate um, through to the real robot um, and also being a relatively quick process to do because, you know, prototyping is about getting answers as quickly as we can. So see a lot of common parts mounted in with these wood plates. Um, we're for the structure of the wood. We're doing you know a lot of gearboxes with you know just you know just plate gearboxes. Um, we're, we'll use tabbed wood um, ribs to to create you know structure between the two sides. You can see that between the top and the bottom of the 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 gearbox. We use tab plates instead of spacers. Um, this keeps us from you know it's, it's the reason we do this is because it's it's simpler to cut a tab plate on the the router than it is to have someone make a bunch of standoffs. So um, it's all about really maximizing the speed there and also it provides some pretty stiff structures. Um, we'll use to back up the the tabbed um, supports we'll use either long bolts or or threaded rods with, with nuts on either ends to, to provide some compression there. Um, or in some places with lighter duty loads, we'll, we'll actually put holes in and use zip ties to just pull everything together. So for the exercise today, we're going to be using construction methods, you know, like this um, in the design. Um, so going through what's what's the problem statement that we're going to work through today. Uh, so let's start with, you know, let's say we need to, we have a shooting year and I, you know, kind of tune this towards what, what this year's game was. Um, let's say we're trying to build a prototype to test the accuracy of a single wheeled shooter at various distances and understand the impact of, of hood compression on shot accuracy. That's the question that we're going after trying to answer. So from this, we can kind of work through and we maybe we work through on a whiteboard what are the different requirements that this is going to drive into the prototype um, so first one you know game piece is let's say it's a seven inch foam ball um, that's going to drive the dimensions on that uh, let's say that we have a, a six we want to try a six inch shooter wheel you know different size shooter wheels are going to impact our the shot accuracy but you know we kind of maybe from the robot size we in the the parts available and everything we're, we're looking to try what see what a six inch wheel can do uh, the com for compression, let's say we want to try two inches and one uh, one inch of compression as our, our two options here. Uh, we have maybe looked at what distances we want to shoot at and the wheel speed, surface speeds and everything, and are estimating maybe a 400 RPM wheel speed from that for that. Um, we'd like this to be rigid. We'd like the, the prototype to be a, a solid um, prototype because that will help us um, be able to to be able to, to to get accurate you know sh shot shot data. So we would like you know if the prototype is made well. We can then take data from the prototype and you know have it reasonably translate to what we expect to see with the robot when we build it. Um, and then you know 
lastly, we'd like a, a feature that we'd like to be able to have some sort of feed belt into the shooter. So we're not just building a shooter, we're also building the feed system into it. And the reason to do this and you know, our reason maybe for doing this is we're looking for consistency and we're also looking for a little bit of safety to basically separate the, the operator from, from feeding directly into a, a fast spinning wheel. Um, so those are the requirements that maybe we laid out, you know, we'll start out the process with you know, coming up with basically, you know, our goal and then sort of the, the key, the key items there. Um, this here, I, I took an example, it took a stab at sort of replicating what the, the sort of like the, the sketch on the whiteboard process and, and the walk through the lab and find random things process might look like. Um, so over on, on the left here, um, we have a, a, did a quick sketch here. So here's our, Here's our six inch wheel um, starting, starting over in, in the corner. Um, we've got, we need some sort of uh, way to power the wheel. Um, so looking at using, you know, using a, a belt reduction on that, uh, did some, did some um, math on that and, you know, using a, a, a Versa, um, a, whatever, a Falcon 5, 500 motor um, the, with the, you know, the, the standard off the shelf uh, pulleys. It looks like we can get, get in the speed range we want with a 16 to 24 pulley reduction there. Kind of, kind of guessed on um, what belt size might be appropriate. You know, usually this is done by you know when you're prototyping, you're trying to put something together. Then, so what belt you use, and in, in, in this case, is going to be driven by what's in the lab. Um, so, and then I, I guess I picked a, a Falcon motor here because you know, let's say we're that's probably what we'd be looking to use on on the robot itself. So, if we can prototype with with like motors, that that gives us an edge up on that. Um, and then the other reason for a Falcon is that it's got a built-in encoder into it, and so if we communicate to it over a CAN, we can use that for velocity control, um, which is going to further increase the accuracy of our prototype. So good, good reasons there. So, so that kind of details out, you know, I guess the powertrain on the wheel for the wheels themselves. Let's say, you know, we, we have a bunch of six inch wheels in our lab. I'm sure you have, people have ones like that. Like let's just say that there's, you know, some wheels like, you know, these, these wheels here, rubber, um, maybe, you know, you know, as, as grippy as we could get, but you know, these look like pretty reasonable wheels. And then there's some, these ones would have like, would have a hub on there. So I guess, um, thinking that we would we would use these as a, a, a sort of a, a dead axle, I mean, sorry, a live axle configuration so that we can use the, the hex pulley to couple into um, the, the wheels themselves. Um, so that's, you know, that's the center there. Um, for the hood, um, we, you know, different, different ways that we could do this. Uh, this is kind of what I sketched in here is based on, on some experience we had from the past season, um, but really looking to sort of create the curve of the hood um, by, ha by having a series of standoffs that will, will go between the plates to, to back up the, the left and, on, and to, to back up the, the, the flat surface that we'll, we'll have there. Um, so a series of standoffs um, and, then, um, and then take a piece of Lexan and bend that to that. And maybe you know, we could just zip tie that Lexan onto to the stage spacers. So this should let us, this should give us a, a nice solid uh, rigid back for the, the ball to be to react off of, um, be representative of something we could achieve on a robot, um, actual robot with design. And then also um, it, with, with the standoffs, we can, we can adjust the position of the standoffs to maybe we have two sets of holes so that we'd be able to, you know, with some work, be able to, to adjust what the compression is, um, but, but not be recutting the entire prototype. Uh, and then for these axles, um, we generally keep some, some stock on hand for, for doing prototyping without having to, you know, start from solid round. So, you know, some of the Versa, the Versa tube stock, um, or spacer stock has some, some nice sizes that can have, um, you know, you could have a tap, tapped hole. Um, it's, you know, it's a tube axle that, that's sized for a tapped hole. Um, and, you know, we, I guess we could use, we could use Thunder Hex, um, or I think in, in the, the past season, we actually used some of the, the, the three quarters, um, tube axle or, yeah, three eighths OD tube axle, which I think is sized was sized for um, a five sixteenths tap in the inside. Um, so that's kind of pictured here. Uh, and then if we kind of sketched out sketched out here what what a feed system might look like, you know, I picked a, a one sided belt here. Um, let's say we let's say we found thirty six tooth five millimeter pulley. Um, belts and maybe I think one hundred thirty teeth might be might be the right distance. We can check that when we get to CAD. Uh, for this, we'll probably, you know, thinking maybe you know, direct mount, just direct mount bearings into the side plates, um, and then use thunder hex to go across and capture things. And then we'll use a variety of, of different, you know, hex spacers and, and shaft collars to, to keep everything together on that. Um, 
then to power this because it's just a feed roller um, or a feed belt, we're not super, I'm not, you know, not trying to get, looking to get a lot of speed out of it for this prototype, you know, maybe the first iteration. Um, so just powering it with a, with a hand drill is probably sufficient here. So not going to design, not going to spend much time on, on a motor or gearbox setup on that. Um, just because it seems like that'd be overkill here. And then kind of sketched through, thought, thought a little bit about how we might make it stiff. Uh, so, you know, sketched in a couple of cross ribs here. So really, you know, we could sort of create a box here underneath the wheel to sort of create, create some nice um, lateral stability, um, torsional stability here. Uh, we could put a plate in between the, the, the sprockets. Um, and then also, you know, we're going to get a lot of support from all of the, the standoffs that are going across the top. So kind of a, a Rough plan right here. We'll see as we get further into CAD what that turns into. Um, so this is kind of maybe representative of the, the planning process that we go through before we would dive into actually the CAD process um, with, with a prototype. You know, started out with you have a have an idea of what we're trying to accomplish with this. Uh, we have a, a sketch, a whiteboard level sketch of of how it is that we think we're going to lay everything out in CAD. And then also, particularly with a prototype, you know, we've gone through the lab and we've actually pulled physical parts um, that that we think are going to be used. Or you know, if we don't have the physical part, we've got we've got a plan of, of what we're going to go out and buy. Um, so that's all. All that stuff you know has been done. You know, we're going to do that before we get into CAD. So kind of rush through all that right here. It would certainly take a little bit longer if we hadn't hadn't done some prep work here. Um, so, but, but now I'm gonna get a dig into the CAD side of that. So switch over to, to SolidWorks here. Um, so I, I guess maybe, yeah. So th now now a little bit, you know, kind of go over some of the, 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 the practices that, you know, when with some of the, the modeling practices that we'll use to, to go quickly with, uh, with you know, prototyping. Um, so the first thing that gonna, we're gonna do um, is that we'll use multi-body parts as a way to sort of create easy references between all of the, the different pieces. So multi-body parts will let us sort of, you know, as we have these different panels in here, um, we'll, we'll actually model them all in, in one SOLIDWORKS part, but be able to split them out by per body later when we need to do the CAM and actually get things cut. Um, so that's the first thing. Um, the second thing is that um, not actually going to model in any of the COTS parts um, unless, I guess, yeah, I won't do any modeling on that unless there's some some question of of fit or clearances that would actually benefit from having having the pieces in there. Uh, that's just you know we're we're basically you know doing a pretty simple model here, and a lot of the a lot of the 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 the, the deltas between what's in the the CAD model and what we're going to assemble will be taken care of. You know you know, with, you know, in a matter of, of a, a day. So, you know, don't need to create an extensive record there. And so really only need to be, you know, building out a full model as, as is needed to, to debug things. So those are probably uh, the, the two main things. Yes. Can you quickly explain the difference between a live and dead axle? Ah, yeah. So live and dead, it refers to um, whether the axle is, the, the torque to the wheel is being transmitted through the axle. Um, and, and then the axle is on bearings, or if the torque is being transmitted to the wheel through a, maybe a sprocket, a plate sprocket, or a, a, that's bolted on, to, bolted to the wheel, and then the wheel and sprocket assembly is on, or wheel and gear assembly is on bearings. Um, so. And then, if you could explain this like briefly, can you explain why we went with a sixteen to twenty four reduction? Um, that was purely based on that previous previous slide where you know had said you know we pick some target range that we're looking to shoot at at you know can do some simple math to estimate out what we what ball velocity we want then you can from that back out what wheel RPMs we think we need to be at um, and then from that I took the free speed of the Falcon um, and what's what sprockets were where pulleys were were readily available and kind of picked a picked a number from that. Thank you. Great. That's all we have cool. for now. Thanks, Mayor. Um, so yeah, I'll go into the the no, I guess yeah, on the CAD stuff. So we'll start out with a multi-body part. Um, I guess the, the first thing is we got to pick which view, um, which which piece we're gonna start with. Uh, so I like to pick, you know, that's the part that's got the most information in it. And really, you know, from this, that's gonna be the 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 side view of this side plate. So we'll start drawing that out um, and kind of filling in those details on it. So um, start with a extruded, you know, extruded base off the side. Um, so first, you know, kind of put in our, our wheel geometry. We have to pick something to, to, to fit to the origin. Um, and I guess putting, well, think through a couple of different things. I, I guess it doesn't, we're not, doesn't really matter. Might as well, might as well put the wheel here and we can just move that later if we want. 
Um, oh shoot, we're in millimeters here. Let's change that. Oh. Now we're in ISO. Sorry, let me forgot to try that again. Sorry, I don't want to lose my work in the middle of this. Um, okay, hopefully this isn't, yep, yeah, now this is the right time. Okay. So start out with a six inch wheel, um, and then you know, we'll draw in the, um, the ball here, just so we can get a rough sense of size, what that looks like. So I'll put the ball in as a construction geometry. Um, so that we can, we don't have to, um, we don't have to see it much. So I'm, I'm putting in just using relationships, and I guess I'm using shortcuts. So that's probably cheating there um, to, to kind of show what things look like. Um, I guess we could start maybe just to get a sense of what things look like. We could put the the hood in, um, so make that concentric, and then this here. So we'll assume that this is the inside of the plate. Um, so that's, and then we'll draw the, sorry, the, the, the smallest of compressions. That's five inches. Um, and then on the entry of that, would like, you know, would like to see, I think, you know, I guess this was based maybe on um, stuff we were seeing last year, but probably have a funnel that's symmetric here. Um, so, so I guess so far, um, let's see, got our wheel in there. Um, probably should put the motor in. Um, I guess, oh, and then what, one thing in the, the pulleys in here. So what did I say? I said this was 24. Um, so three millimeter pitch. So 24 times three millimeters divided by pi is our pitch diameter. And this is going to be um, 16 times. So um, one thing I'm realizing here is that we would like two different compressions here. Um, we'd probably like to keep feeding the ball centered. Um, so we probably want to actually move the motor back and forth. Um, so that probably, you know, I think that the easiest way to do that might be to create a separate separate motor plate. Um, that gets bolted on, and then we can just you know take that extra piece and move it back and forth. So I'm, we'll we'll guess what? I, maybe as I'm, I'm thinking out loud here, um, we will build this as a base sketch, and then we'll build the the next piece, the pieces off of it. So here's our. motor and then the falcon if i remember correctly it's like 2.55 or something so we're going to want that to sit low enough that we're not going to intersect that bearing um, so for the belts what we'll do is we, we'll do a path link dimension on that We had said, I think it was 45 um, millimeters. Okay, so that that looks like you know if we want the if we want the motor to clear the bearing here, um, that belt's not big enough. So we could go to the the Vex Pro, and I said that was a 45. Um, so it maybe maybe they have a, a, a 55, or you could um, yeah. Um, it's not super particular what that is, but we, we do need one that exists. Um, and, and yeah, we would probably at this stage, I would have, you know, gone into the, the lab and, and tried to find another, another belt, um, that would, you know, that would do what we needed. Um, let's see, we got that. And then, oh, we should plan out the, plan out the feed system. This was 36 times five millimeters. Five. So this is calculating, basically calculating what the pitch diameter of the belt is based on 
the number of teeth and um, the, the pitch. We do a similar thing on the, I guess we, we, all, we don't need to do a path link because the math is relatively easy on this one. So um, I guess I, I could, uh, <laughs> sometimes it's easier to, to do the, the, to put in an equation rather than just type it in so you can come back and check your work later. So it's a 130 tooth. We have 36 teeth consumed by going around the outside um, and divide that by two and then times five millimeter. Okay. Okay, so now, now the question is we have to think through like how much compression do we want on the feed rollers? Um, oh shoot, something's not happy here. There, now it's happy. Um, so, so if we, th we think about, if we have a, a neutral line of compression coming down here. Um, I think that we're gonna want, well, I don't know. I don't think we wanna push, compress the feed roller as much as we're compressing um, the, the shooter wheels. Uh, I, I think here, this is something that we could, we would go through and determine by uh, ex experimental um, we could we could just take a belt and put it at different compressions on the table to kind of get an idea of what um, what would be appropriate there. Uh oh, this something got constrained. So with it, something came over constrained. So my I've shown the relationships and now I can yeah that one's was got added in inferred, but we didn't need that. So so if it's a, maybe half an inch of compression, let's just I'm just guessing. So we got half an inch of compression on the feed rollers. Um, okay. And then there's certainly going to be a, a distance here of, of of how far up this goes. So what we can do is we can um, we can put a, a moving ball here and kind of get a sense of how it's going to transition. Um, or I guess I guess we might as well just put it as the point where it first contacts. Um, so ideally we'd like, you know, we'd still like contact, you know, driving from the feed roller system. And so it transitions over actively. Um, so this is looks not terrible here. Um, we could probably probably define this in um, just to give an idea of, of where that sits. I, because we're gonna come back and we're gonna drive everything off that, it's, it doesn't matter terribly much. We're gonna drive things off of this assembly. You can, can just pick semi-random numbers. Um, okay, so that, this is looking, I guess looking pretty much like a, a shooter here. Um, did I, what are we doing on the, the core of it? Um, yeah, I think we've probably got the 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 big um, the big pieces in here. Um, guess we'll guess move on to move on to getting that that main plate in there, um, and we'll be able to piece through the the different things that go in there. So I guess I, we don't we don't want this as an extrude. We'll create one on top of it. Um, so. So for, yeah, I guess even at the prototype level, it can be helpful to, to name your sketches so that when you come back to them, you, you don't get confused on what it is that you're doing. Um, so now we're gonna, now we're laying out the outside of, of this all. Um, so, you know, these, these, this point here, we have a, oh, actually, yeah, this, this, is, this is gonna be figured out later. Um, I will not do this yet. That was gonna be a bearing, but then I remembered that we're doing the, the, the plate on top of it. Um, so, so these are gonna be bearings here. Make them equal. 
because it's wood, we typically just put everything on size and that will end up as a, a press with the spring back and the cutting. Um, and then, and then I think, you know, we'll close this, you know, put some sort of sizing on it. Um, you know, for, for this exercise, we, there's no harm in actually just making a box. Um, I don't see any reason to spend any extra time worrying about that. Um, probably, you know, referencing things off of the, the location of what's there. Um, so using the minimum, using the minimum dimension rather than like a, you know, a center part. So um, you can select that by holding down the shift and it will auto shortcut to picking that, like, you know, the different art conditions. Um, this way, if we, you know, if we come back and let's say the six inch wheel is, is, was a great success on, or was a mediocre success on a prototype and we want to try a four inch wheel or we want to try an eight inch wheel. Um, and we want to basically recut everything. Um, this way, if you go in and you update the wheel size, it will be relatively straightforward to, to, for everything else to auto update with it. Um, so do that there. Um, and then similarly up here, I'm just giving us a little bit extra margin there, particularly in the front, you know, the, if the, the wood goes and covers the wheel, that's probably safer. Um, so that'll be good for us. Um, and then here, yeah, we need, we need enough room to fit the ball in there. Um, I guess, you know, one thing we could look at is that we could look at the, you know, overall height of this. Um, you know, if, if we were, if we were super particular, um, uh, if we were super particular, um, we might want to like match this to be the height that we are expecting to shoot at. Um, but, but uh, I think that, you know, for now we can, um, just, you know, this, this looks like close enough to a robot height that we will go with it. Um, okay. And then, yeah, this I guess the last thing over here. Hey, I guess a, a lot less in this base sketch than I had maybe thought there would be. Um, so I, I think that here you come into the balance of like, how much do you put in, just do an all in one sketch versus having a series of features. And, you know, I guess my, my strategy on this is to have things segmented to a, a reasonable level. You know, if you have interdependencies between things, you, it's better to have, it's, but the only real way to do that is to have it within one sketch. But if, if you have different features, you know, let's say, you know, the, we have the, the, the hole for mounting the motor um, and the wheel might be different from the holes that put in the hood. Um, in, in those cases, you know, I think it's better to, um, it's better to do things in multiple features. That way, if you kind of change your strategy on how you do something, it's, it's much easier to, to detangle what's happening and just go and delete the right thing and move on and put something else in. Um, so kind of create a mix there. It makes, the, the, the downside is you can end up with a really long feature tree. Okay, so now we're, now we're creating our first um, extrude. So here's where I'm starting to think forward towards towards our multi-body part here. Um, and so, you know, I've got in mind that, um, you know, we kind of want everything to end up in space where we expect it to be. And so there should be a, you know, a plane of symmetry down the middle of this. And we have plates that are symmetric to either side of that. Um, and so what I'm going to do is I'm going to, on the from condition, instead of starting on the plane, I'm going to do an offset and do that offset by the width of or half the width of what we expect the prototype to be. So seven inch ball, I'm just gonna guess that we make it eight, eight inch wide. That seems like enough width on either side of the ball so that we're not gonna run it, you know, we're not gonna be impacted by the, the side walls of the, of the um, prototype. So that means that we'll offset by four inches. Um, and then, um, yeah, that's, then it's going another quarter inch um, beyond that. And so I think, I guess the, the wood is such that it's close enough to quarter inch that we just plan off of a quarter inch and use nominal on that. Okay, great. Because it's the first one, I don't have to worry about any of the features. There. So that kind of put that plate where we'd expect it to be um, in the robot. So I guess looking pretty good there. Um, one thing I had was thinking through, I figured next let's we can put in some of those the spacers there. Um, to probably think about and plan out in, the, in this sketch here, what hood angle we're gonna go to. Um, so. So here's where you know we're gonna do our math and make some sort of trajectory assumption on on what's the longest shot we want to make. Um, let's say that I don't know, 15 degrees. Pretty. That's a pretty far shot. Um, and, we, and you know, really, I guess my other thinking is that err on the side of having it be <laughs> be too much. Um, and then and then what we can do is we can you know we can dial that back um, back as we as we want. Um, so. 
um, and sorry, but by, by that, I mean, like, you know, if we have, if we put an extra hole so that the hood angle goes super far, we just, we make the Lexan plate, we screw it on, we decide that, um, we decide that that's, you know, it's, it's, it's shooting too low and, you know, it's, it's out of range of what we want to do with just sort of, you know, popping up the prototype front and back. Um, we could always take out some spacers and trim the Lexan and, and then we'd be good there. So 15 degrees, we'll go with that. Um, so now I'm going to put the holes in um, for the feature here. Um, and, you know, putting in holes, it's generally nice to use a hole wizard on things. Um, particularly, I'm going to use hole wizard here because I can actually use a linear pattern to, to simplify some of this. So, um, so what I'm going to do is we're going to put a hole wizard into here. Uh, if I remember correctly, it is a 5 sixteenths, and we'll do close. Um, so, now I'm going to kind of sketch out how things look. So we have our stack up here. Um, if I remember correctly, um, it's it's not the the spacer is actually 0.375 OD. Oh, that does not look right. Um, maybe it's a yeah. So that must be you know I'd have to look at the stock. It doesn't really matter for this discussion. Let's say it's a half inch spacer. Um, so half inch spacer, um, and it's going to be, we're gonna starting on this end, cause I think it helps us out in the end. And then we wanna plan for our Lexan. And the Lexan is gonna be an eighth of an inch. Okay, so here's where our first standoff is. Now, instead of just putting in a bunch of holes, we can actually use a curve-driven pattern to, to generate all of that, all of those curves for us. So um, going to put in two lines that we're gonna put in lines in the sketch um, that are going to that are going to form the the, the path that we're gonna we're gonna have our um, holes take. Um, shoot, that did not define it yet. There we go. Um, so we want the holes to be distributed along this line um, even, evenly, or we'll get to figure out exactly what. Um, so I think I need to make that construction to do that. Okay, great. So put that through, and then we'll put the holes along it. So, um, so linear pattern, curve-driven pattern, and then the direction. Oh, shoot, I want to select the sketch. We have a question asking, why did oh. you make the hood construction lines? Um, I guess I could have gone, e gone either way. I, I, at one point, I thought I'd make it that we were going to make that our boss extrude. So it was better to have things construction lines. Um, but I guess it, it doesn't really matter here. So, so I'm going to go here with equal spacing so that we can, we can have... Um, uh, when we make the Lexan piece, I think it will be easier to get the holes doll line up. Um, so make this, I don't know, point, let's see what 0.5, oh, that looks too much, um, or one inch. Um, yeah, sure, one inch spacing looks fine. Nope, that's not what I wanted. So, so yeah, this, this is, you know, putting holes that line up you know, over the path that we want to take. Um, that looks pretty good there. Um, and we can now use the, we could use the same strategy to go in um, and put the holes in for, for the, the larger compression. So might as well, um, so I guess might as well go in and, and do that now uh, while we're here. So, um, five sixteenths, yeah. So I guess in this case, we got to draw in the curves again. Um, so these, uh, yeah, I know, we know that this is going to be the same, um, the same, like, uh, the same radius as the line that we had before, um, and just offset in some. This actually will start at the same height. And then this is going to be offset over by, yeah, shoot. 
this is going to be offset over by a quarter of an inch. No, half half of an inch, right? Because it's going to be one inch of shoot, one inch of compression. The motor will move by half an inch, and this will move by half an inch. Um, okay, and then we put the other one in. Yeah, if we wanted the extra, like an extra spacer out there, we, we probably should, you know, go in and increase the if we, the 15 we thought was a very precise number, we should probably increase that a little bit. Um, but that's neither. I don't think that's a problem for us right now. Um, so now we can go back and create a curve-driven pattern. Yeah, I, so I'm I've, I've going and selecting from the feature tree instead of just selecting on the sketch, because if you select from the sketch, it will draw up, um, it will will pull in, um, um, it, it, uh, if you select from the, if you select from the sketch, it will, you'll put you into the, the, the per, you know, the, you're having to select each of the segments and building a contour from that. And that makes it harder to update if you add, like, you know, change, add a new line segment or do something like that. So it's, it's more robust up the sketch in there. Um, great. And so, you know, here we see that we get one more hole out of it, um, which makes sense because our path length is slightly longer. Um, but the spacing between them should be roughly the same. So when we cut the lex, well, it is the same on the curve. So, but the holes in the lex end will be roughly the same. So that should be, you know, that'll be nice for us later. Um, cool. So we've got, we've got the mounting holes in for our spacers. Um, and, you know, at this point, like, I think that the temptation may be to, to actually put spacers in here. Um, to kind of visualize what that looks like. But, you know, that's just extra work and I'm going to be lazy. Um, and so, you know, we, we'll see what the, it looks like with spacers in there once we actually go ahead and, um, and build, build it. Um, if we, we really thought it was critical, we could, could do that here. Um, cool. And so now, now we're going to go ahead um, and let's see, we got the hood. Um, why don't we attack the motor next? Um, so, so, now here's, this is going to be our first point of a, a multi-body part. Um, so what we want to create um, is we want to create an assembly um, or sorry, not, it's, well, I guess we are creating an assembly. We want to create a part in here that's going to, you know, mount and hold the motor, um, you know, hold, hold the wheel on the motor. Um, and then we'll cut a pocket in, in the assembly and we'll have two different mount spots for it. So let's go ahead and put in the first one. So did I just get, yeah, we'll extrude Bosse space off here. So this, um, have our uh, bearing hole, and then our motor hole. And we're just going to use exact center to centers, which I guess we did that. We made that decision earlier. Um, and then we have our mount holes for our Falcon. You know, this is something where, like, I guess I'm, I probably should um, make these. You know, it's, it's better to use maybe whole wizard to decide where it could be better to use whole wizard. I'm just going to put them in here. So it's one less feature and because I know what the, the, the size is um, the, for their 1032s. Um, we'll do a close fit. So in general, our preference, I thought I got that one. Um, general, our preference is to kind of use whole wizard whenever we can, but we'll just kind of take a shortcut here because this model is not going to live very long. Um, okay, so now now we're looking at you know we have um, we're going to have the plate that everything gets mounted to. I guess it doesn't you know the plate doesn't need to be much bigger than than the whole. Um, we're going to. Um, Huh. Yeah, I guess we can always come back and fix it later if we're wrong. Um, so, um, yeah, sorry, just thinking about what to do here. And then, yeah, we'll make the, make it centered. So I yeah, selecting the midpoint here and then just make them vertical. I guess I could put a construction line in, but it doesn't seem necessary. Um, yeah, planning this out, um, you know, if we put the, if we put the, um, yeah, we'll just make this a little bit. I'm just thinking that we'll make the holes above 
um, above where the motor is, that will be, you know, so our, our it'll be a little bit cleaner there. Um, so that, yeah, but sorry, the, the mounting holes will go above the slot that we cut out rather than to the left and right of it, so which, which means that we don't need as much margin on the, the left and right. looks like. Okay, I think that's all defined. Um, great. So now this is our this is our first part, our first extrude that is going to be a separate piece. Of, um, so we want to, we want to, you know, basically we're going to, this is where we get to the multi-body part. Um, and so you can see that, you know, it looks like, you know, it's already starting to look like, you know, two plates stacked on top of each other. Really the way this create multi-body is you just unclick the merge results. Um, and now um, it doesn't extrude, but if you go here, it added a folder for bodies. Um, and so if we isolate, you know, per body, we can see this is, this is one piece here. You know, it hid one of the bodies there and we can exit. And then we can select the other guy, we can isolate on it. So really what we've done is we created two parts in one part file. Um, and that's going to let us, you know, let us create ref robust references between them. Um, I guess you could accomplish the same thing in an assembly with in context parts. Um, but I have found that to be, you know, as soon as you start getting out of the context of that master assembly, it starts getting hard to manage. Um, and so this is the easiest way to sort of keep all the, all the bad things contained in one spot. Um, so now we can put the whole wizard in for the mounting holes. Um, Cause we actually, you know, we want the mounting holes to go through both of them. 10, we standardize pretty much on 1032s. So I guess, um, well, this is probably a tedious way to do it. We just want them all spaced in evenly. So just put a bunch of construction lines in on that. Right. And then, okay, I guess the default was already go through all. So that made one set of cut, cuts there. Um, now we can go through and we can cut out the, the box, um, the clearances. So we wanna make sure that our pulleys fit in there. That would be pulleys and our screw heads. So so. Yeah, I'm kind of just picking arbitrary dimensions because it doesn't really matter here. Um, and then on this guy, because we're going to be sliding, uh, oh, actually, I got it backwards. The motor is going to move out. So this this is actually, so that's 0.25. And then we'll add, make that 0.75. Great. Um, okay. And then... So here, actually, here there's it's not there's no ambiguity about which body it is. But if we wanted to make sure it only cut through the right one, we could go through and just select the the body and let it, instead of letting it auto select. Um, yeah, because we're putting a hole on the inside, we need to make sure to add our fillets in there. Um, yeah, point one. Uh, we have a clarifying question asking. Yes. Is the offset distance for the hood standoff hole supposed to be one inch? If not, wouldn't the prototype test for two and one and a half inch compression instead of two and one? So yeah, it's, we have half inch. So we have half inch of, we move the hood out by half an inch and we move the motor over by half an inch um, to go to the second one. So the combined should be a one inch of Delta. So that's actually, this is a feature that we're putting in here. Let's see if this will work with just a linear pattern. Um, Shoot, why is this? Let's 
So we're putting a second set of holes in there. Um, and we just want it in this one. Great. So that looks like that looks like the right thing. So if we, you know, if we want to swap from the, the five inches of compression to the seven inches of, or six inches of compression, we'd have to take this plate, move it over, and then we have to move the standoffs out. Um, cool. So I think that's a that's should be all the hardware we need to get the motor to spin and you know have the the belt and stuff. Now I think we're we're onto the structure here. Um, and so so this is where we're gonna think about it, you know. Kind of going to add some more parts in here. I'm going to start with going to go ahead and you know build that box out that we sort of sketched out over here, um, and thinking through how to simplify it, what sort of shortcuts that we can take. Um, I mean, we can, we have a lot of we're going to have a lot of symmetry in here um, just to create that that box. So well, let's just take a stab at it. Um, Yeah, we maybe we'll yeah we'll figure this out. Um, okay, so so I'm gonna start by just drawing in the we'll we'll start with the, this plate here this this vertical one um, and then we'll we'll go ahead and we'll we'll put in the cross one. So I'm gonna do an extruded boss base off. Oh, not that one. One on the inside. Actually, why don't we do it off? Do it off the right one. Um, so I'm only going to draw half of it because we know that we need to mirror it left and right. Um, so I'm going to draw this. Um, yeah, why not? We'll go all the way down to the bottom. That'll give us maximum sort of stiffness there. Um, this guy is going to be collinear with the line that we drew previously. Um, we need to make sure this doesn't intersect with stuff up here. I, I can't really see it doing that. It's going to clear. It need to clear the wheel. So I guess we might as well just mention all that. Yeah, once, <laughs> once the ball gets up here, it's going to start going really fast with the wheel. Um, so, so we'll make this 0.75. In general, I've kind of put dimensions down. If they look close enough, just round it to the best fraction or you know, whole same number. So, so now um, we'll use the, I'm going to use the end conditions again. So from, we'll do from the sketch plane and then up direction, we'll do up to surface. And this gets back to making the model robust. If someone went in and changed changed the the width of the shooter for like a second generation, it would, it would automatically update everything here. Um, and then because we want it multi-body, we will not merge it. Okay, great. So now we've got that there. Um, I'm actually going to isolate this body so that we can we can put those tabs in there. So now we're going to go in um, and we're going to we're going to put the tabs in like we have. Um, over here. So kind of creating a square cut and then we have to relieve out the corners on it. Um, so I'm going to put extruded boss base on this side. Um, and this will be, so we'll put a couple in here, the, the tabs not going to go all the way to the end so that there's something on, on both sides for it to interlock into. Um, it looks like four looks like a, a reasonable number here. Um, like to make them all equal. Two inches long seems fine enough. Um, one inch from the bottom. And now I'm gonna go through and gonna just put some sketch relations to, to even everything out. I guess I probably could have used a pattern, but at some point, some point it's easier to just commit to something um, and do it. Um, you know, with particularly with this the short time frame prototype work. Okay, great. Everything looks defined here. And then this, yep, it's already got it a quarter inch, and then it should auto select to the right thing, but we can just double check that. Okay, um, we've got that. And then you, then what we can do is, you know, we need to put the cuts into the other place. Well, so conveniently that, that extrude that we did, we can do similarly just do a cut off of the other one. Um, and so this is the, the beauty of the multi-body is that we can auto reference everything together. So now we have cuts in one, um, 
and tabs in the other. Um, now, you know, now let's, let's do the, let's do the part where we do the, um, um, the, the, the mirror, the, sorry, not mirroring, um, do, do the relief cuts in it. Um, so just going to start with, uh, I guess not, uh, yeah, we'll do relief cuts then. Cause we're going to pattern things and it'll be easier then. Um, so now, um, take this guy and, um, Let's see, we'll just isolate it out. So I need to put reliefs in every of the, all of the corners um, yeah, so that we can uh, cut them with a router. So this, with great practice, you can get it so that the relationships all go in at the same time, which makes it pretty quick. Someone asked, how do you select only the construction line and not the other sketch? Um, with, can you, sorry, with which, which part of the assembly? I'm not sure. Only construction line. Um, I think the stuff is so far has just been like auto snapping. Like I haven't had to worry about being super precise on selecting things. Maybe ask a follow-up question. If you can always do like right click select other that's that's all you know something in here is tangent oh, darn it that is obnoxious well And then this this diameter that I've chosen is just what we use for for end mills. Um, Here we go, that's our culprit. Um, a follow-up question is, when you placed construction lines on the edge of the part, how did you only select those to make to create sketch relations? When I put place constructions, it, at which step was? Okay. Sorry, that took longer than it should have. Those are the relief cuts. I, I'm sorry, I'm still not following that one. Um, I'm, I'm gonna take these and because we want a box, I'm just gonna linear pattern them over. And here, this is not the cleanest. Um, I guess I, we could clean this up, but I'm just gonna guess at the dimension until it looks right. Um, great. And then we're gonna, we want, you know, to create a, a box for strength, we wanna have a cross-referenced on it. Um, trying to think about, does it really matter where we put that? Um, sure, we'll do it in the middle of the tab, it doesn't, it doesn't matter. Um, so gonna do a similar thing here. We'll start there. A question was asking about when you were making the rectangles for the tabs and to make the spaces in between them. Oh, how did I, I mean, I just, I think I just manually, I just manually selected on them. Um, I didn't, I didn't, I didn't, uh, I didn't have them go over any of the, so none of this construction lines went over um, the, 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 the non-construction lines that, helps. Okay. Thank you. I guess that we'll we'll see that again, I guess, and that maybe it will make more or be clearer there. Okay. Um 
Oh, shoot, I did not unclick undo, mer do not merge results. Great. Yeah, I guess this is the, the slow part that is not, is not terribly interesting. But, oh, wrong direction. That did not go well. Um, oh, we had flip side to cut on. Okay. Um, and, you know, I guess in, in this case, I, I don't need to go through and, and necessarily um, show doing the reliefs on that. We'll, we'll, do, we'll do that if we have time at the end. Um, then here, um, oh, shoot. Going to do a tab off here. So because it's a, a midline, we'll just just do it. You know, we'll put one in there, and then because it'll get mirrored, it'll get um, sent over from the other side. Someone is asking if you're planning on making relief. Is it really cutouts on the tabs themselves as well? Yes. Yeah, I'll do that. I guess I'll do that on one of them um, so that we can see that all. Um, okay. I, so here I'm going to be lazy. I'm just going to take the, the, the same, you know, same sketch and use it for putting the other side on. So we can use, do that by modifying the start conditions. Um, great. Yep. So that's a great point. You know, let's see. On this guy here, we need to put relief cuts in it. So going to go through and we'll do extruded cut on that. And then typically put them in on this side. I have a SolidWorks setup question, which is what preference do you have set that allows you to select a feature or plane from the design tree and view where else it's referenced via the branches? Um, that's a great, there was a, there's a, a menu that had a lot of settings and I just clicked all of them. Um, <laughs> so I think, so just play around with things. I think maybe it's no. Uh, this stuff: dynamic reference parents and dynamic reference children. Yep. Yeah. So this is that relief cut that whoever put in that comment was was right. We do need. Um, shoot, oh, wrong direction. There we go. Um, okay, um, and then oh, we can put this cut. This guy needs to cut. So at this point, I think we're set up. <laughs> For everything, oh no, I need to, to to do a pattern down here. Um, you know, in this case, we'll just mirror this down, um, mirror the cuts down. That cut. So I think everything is, um, you know, oh, and then, yeah, I think everything's set up so that, that we would, um, we would, would like this part would work over here. You know, if we were really, you know, I guess, I guess we might as well just put, put the piece in. Um, 
to help ourselves out. So the, um, yeah, the, the, these two pieces should be same top bottom. We don't necessarily have to put them in, but we could put them in. Um, I think that the, the other thing that we need to do here is we need to create a mirror um, left and right to be able to make the part. So mirror and we'll do bodies to mirror. So the reason I do bodies to mirror is because if you, you know, if you go back and you add more features to the bodies, you don't have to like reselect everything. Um, so this is, and I think we might have to do it per, well, let's see if it, if it's happening. Nope, that's not what we want. Mirrored solids. That give us our bodies. Yeah, they cut the two separate bodies here. Um, we could go through, um, yeah, we could go through and we could like actually move this guy over here. Well, I guess why not? Um, insert features, move copy, copy, uh, and translate by, oh, translate in Z. I can't remember where it's like 5.5 or something. So that's you know a quick way we can just kind of put that piece in place. You know, really, you know, if we're when we we're going to cam it, we're not going to actually do that. Um, so, and then I think the the last things that we probably need to put in here. Um, well, besides probably we probably want to put a rib, you know, somewhere over here on this side to to strengthen um, the belts as things come in. And we could probably put one down on the bottom if we were we were super worried about that. Um, I think, yeah, we also, you also could like take a two by four and put a two by four across and stiffen it. It does, you know, we don't need to be super precise here. It's more about, you know, what is easy to do in CAD that's hard to do later. Let's get that stuff done here. Then let's get it to the fabrications so we can get it cut. Um, last thing that I want to put in here before we probably call it quits is um, we want to put in the, the, um, the, the compression members. Um, so what we'll do is we'll just put a whole wizard. We have, I guess, uh, so we have some general quarter 20 rods that will, will they're a threaded rod, all thread. Um, and we'll use that in a couple of places. Um, but, but the idea is that let's, let's put the, um, let's put these wood members under compression. Um, and that's what's gonna actually create the strength of the, of the pieces. And this is just some clearance, but I don't know how much. It doesn't really. Oh shoot! Um, so okay. Oh, that's just a little close to that tab there. So let's in increase that a little bit. Um, Yeah, and also compressing, you know, compressing right here. I, I might want to um, move the tab or, or move the, yeah, maybe maybe that having the tab intersect here wasn't wasn't as good an idea as, we, as I thought. Um, I don't know if we can just quickly move that up here. Let's, let's see. Because we'd like to put that compression uh, inside of we'd like to put that compression through not not through an exposed tab but actually um, through a part oh, this is that's just too close it's closer than we need to be for a prototype yeah it's maybe better but I still don't like that um,
Okay, so that maybe moves it up some. Um, but now, now we're like, you know, when we put those rods through, we're going to be compressing through the meat of the of the piece there and getting some some nice um, junction between the two of them. Um, uh, we could probably overkill it and add some extra holes in now if we wanted. Um, I think I'm, I'm looking around at what we've got here. Um, uh, we could, you know, we're pretty close to being able to, to cut something and be able to, to get this up and running. Probably, you know, we could go back to our, um, go back to our requirements um, and look at how we're doing on that. Um, so yeah, we definitely have seven inch wheel. We've got six inch shooter wheels. Two and one compression looks looks like we're we're set up for that. Um, yeah, we got those gear ratios. Probably sh should be rigid enough, and if not, we'll be able to to fix that. Um, you know, the, I guess the most important part is probably the fact you know the hood construction here. This this is you know we have this made pretty rigid there, so that you know you know it will get a, a nice solid solid adjustment solid uh, foundation there, and then we can add in stiffening like two by fours or things if needed or based on what we observe, um, and then. And then kind of going through here, you can sort of see how this sort of sketch sort of translated into, you know, a SolidWorks um, model here. Um, if I think about, you know, what's left between here and, and actually cutting a prototype that we could use, um, we probably, we'd have to go in and we have to model in, you know, a Lexan plate that's got the holes in it. So, you know, cause we probably want that just cut out on the router to make things easier. Uh, we've got to go in and finish adding in all the reliefs. Um, I'd probably go in and add fillets around everything using the, the auto fillet just because it makes things easier to cam and also ends up with less sharp edges. Um, we talked about adding in a stiffener over here or somewhere around here, um, or, or I guess, or the two by four, one, either one would work, um, do that. And I think that, I think that covers, you know, pre pretty close here to, to being able to have something that we could, we could send over to the, to the router, um, get cut out and, and then be, you know, up and up and shooting in, in an evening. Um, Before you wrap now, up, yep. Quickly, would you mind sharing a few of your favorite keyboard shortcuts and mouse gestures in SolidWorks? Ah, uh, um, I haven't really gotten into the mouse gestures um, much uh, on keyboard shortcuts. Um, I guess I, I use um, the all of the I use all of the relationship. You know, the vertical, horizontal. Um, equal, you know, you saw me use those a lot throughout the, the time there. Um, use the, like, those are just, those are like hardwired into like alt and then the a, Q, V, H and those things. Um, then there's use construction, you know, switching between construction lines a lot. Um, use dimension. So just like, you know, I've shortcutted in smart dimension um, to, to D. I think I used, I used V for viewing and hiding sketch relationships a, a bit. Um, that was kind of, I think those were the, the main ones that I was using here. Oh, and then S is another interesting one um, in that, you know, this is, S just pulls up a, a shortcut menu that's got, I think it's hard coded into that, um, but it's just got some of the, the handy, you know, the, the most used features. So that's how I'll get to circles and squares and things. I don't have them shortcutted out from there. Um, and then, yeah, definitely, we didn't use any measuring here, but definitely use a lot of that. Um, then, yeah, I guess last one to, to wrap up with, um, you know, this is a picture here of a prototype that, that we made um, this past season, you know, using, you know, kind of, I guess I cheated, I worked backwards, uh, used, uh, using a lot of the, the things that we talked about, about here. Um, and yeah, you can see that we've got, I think, I guess we, we moved, we have a bearing plate that we can move back and forth. We have, we have some ability to adjust the, the, the compression um, and, and where the motor is. Um, we've got some some box construction here to, to stiffen it up. And then, you know, here we have it connected up to a robot um, so that we can control the, you know, get the get the speeds controlled on the, on the shooter wheel um, and be able to, to get to collect, get, you know, get to collecting data and answering the question of, you know, is this a good design or not? So any other questions, Mira, before, I think that, that was pretty much all I had unless people have some questions to bring up. We don't have any more questions right now. So I think you're good to wrap up. Okay. Great. Well, thanks everyone for tuning in and checking out this Spartan series session. Um, so we're going to be having more sessions throughout the week. So please be sure to tune in to the other ones, such as you know, tomorrow we're going to have a session on you know, effective organization and workflow management. So it should be a lot of great content. Hope you, hope you get a chance to tune in. Thanks.